Hello, welcome to another video. In this video, I'll be going through this vectors question. So I was live streaming yesterday and somebody sent in this question to go through. Um, and by the way, part A is not the issue, part B is the more difficult part of this question. Um, but uh, I'm going to share two ways of solving this question. The second way is the way that I solved it on the live stream. The first way is the way that I would prefer to solve these types of questions. Um, so anyways, let's get started. Uh, this question says CDEF is a quadrilateral. CD equals A, the vector A, D equals B, and FC equals A take B. And part A says express FE in terms of A and or B, give your answer in its simplest form. So FE is this length down here. So if we want to go from F to E, we could go up and around. So we would have uh, A take B plus A plus B. And then this equals A plus A is 2A and negative B plus B, they cancel out. So the final answer there is 2A. Uh, so part A is, there shouldn't be really any issues with part A, but let's move on to part B. Part B says M is the midpoint of DE. X is the point on FM such that FX to XM equals N to one. CXE is a straight line, work out the value of N. Okay, so they tell us M is the midpoint of DE and CXE is a straight line. So that would be a line going through X to E. So I strongly encourage you to give this one a go before you uh, continue watching. So please pause the video now if you want to give this a go. All right, so spoiler alert, the key to this problem is that this is a straight line and therefore CE is a multiple of CX, is a scalar multiple. That's going to be the key to help us solve this uh, because CE, the vector CE, we can work out, right? CE is just A plus B. So if we want to go from here to E, we go A, the vector A plus the vector B and we'll get to E. So CE is A plus B. And so that's going to be my main starting point. Um, so we've said the vector CE is A plus B. And because we know CX is a straight line, therefore CE is some multiple of CX. All right, we know that from our vector rules. Inversely, we can also say it the other way around. We can say CX is some multiple of CE. Now, this is going to be a fraction, right? Because CX is smaller than CE, but we can still say it's some scalar multiple of CE. So we have an expression for CX. Uh, now, we have this ratio of FX to XM of N to one. So this ratio here is N to one for this line. So uh, now I want an expression for FM, the vector FM. Uh, so we said from part A, FE is 2A. So FE 2A take half B will get me to M. So FM could be written as 2A take half B. So that's my next step. FM equals 2A take half B. And now what I want to do is to create two expressions for fx. Okay, so fx could be some fraction of fm, right? Some uh, part of fm. And then fx could also be fc plus cx. Uh, now looking at this fraction of this line, n, uh, we can't really say that fx equals n fm, right? Uh, this is not, this would not really be accurate. Why is that? Well, if you think of a line and you split it up into a ratio of say three to two, so this is a straight line, uh, what fraction of that line is this part here? Well, you don't say the fraction of that line is three. Um, so if, if this line was, 10 centimeters, for example, in length, you wouldn't then say this section is three times 10 is 30 centimeters. You have to write that as a fraction. So you know that if the ratio is three to two 
this fraction here is 3 out of 5. So then to work out that fraction of the line, you'd do 3 over 5 times 10, uh, and you'd get 6. So to s this statement here, fx equals nfm, is kind of uh, inaccurate. Uh, it would eventually help you to get to the answer, but uh, but the, the true statement would be that fx equals n over the total uh, parts of that line, which is n plus 1 fm. Now, that's going to end up being messy. So what you're going to want to do here is to let some variable, let x equal this, n over n plus 1. And that's actually going to make your solution a lot simpler. So let some variable equal this fraction of this line um, and uh, it's going to work out much easier for you. So uh, I'm, that's what I'm going to write down here. So uh, let x equal n over n plus 1. Then fx is that fraction of fm, so x to a take half b. Also fx equals fc plus cx and in this case fc is a take b and cx is k a plus b. If we simplify that uh, we get well combine like terms so we get a plus ka and plus uh, kb take b so then we can write this as k plus 1 a uh, plus k take 1 b. So what this actually gives us is two expressions for the same vector. So the vector fx is this and this here. Um, now with the same vector we can equate the coefficients, right? So we can say uh, 2xa 2xa equals this coefficient here, k plus 1. Uh, this is called uh, equating coefficients. Uh, very important step to understand when solving these types of vectors questions and many other different types of questions as well. So if you're not sure about equating coefficients, uh, maybe Google that, type that into YouTube and check out uh, what that's all about. Um, then we also have uh, negative half x, negative half x, actually another way of writing that would be uh, negative x on 2. So that's the coefficient of b up here. And then this one down here is equal to k take 1. Um, so just to be ultra clear, this is my first expression of fx. This is my second expression of fx. All right, so now we have two equations with two unknowns and we're going to be able to solve for x. Oh, and by the way, we didn't need that a in there. So it's just 2x equals k plus 1. Then we could say, uh, therefore, k equals 2x take 1. So just subtracting that 1 from the left-hand side. Then substitute that into this expression here. Um, and I might start up here this time. Uh, so substitute it in here, we get negative x on 2 equals 2x take 1 take 1. Therefore, negative x on 2 equals 2x take 2. Therefore, negative x equals 4x take 4. And then simplify this however you like. You could add that x to the right hand side, add the 4 to the left hand side. We would get 5x equals to 4. Therefore, x equals 4 on 5. Um, and remember that we let x equal n over n plus 1. So, uh, therefore, n over n plus 1 equals 4 on 5. So, n must be 4. Um, so, you could rearrange, you could cross multiply and solve, or you can just see that uh, n must be 4 in this case. So final answer there is 4. Um, that was, as I said, the method that I prefer. But let me now go through the method that I uh, went through on this live stream. Um, so I'm just going to delete all of this. Um, so the again, 
we're relying on the fact that CX is a straight line. So again, we want to say that CE equals A plus B. And we're also going to want FM again. So we already found that in the last one, that was 2A take half B. And this time I want a different expression for CX. I want to do CX equals CF plus FX. Now again, we're going to use the idea that FX is some uh, multiple of FM or some scalar multiple. Um, so CX is, well, CF is the negative of FC. So negative A take B plus FX. Now again, I want to let X equal N over N plus one. Remember N plus one is the fraction of that line. Uh, so if the ratio is N to one, as a fraction, this is going to be N over N plus one of FM. Therefore, it's going to be X of FM, which is 2A take half B. So what this does is it, it makes the simplifying a lot easier. Rather than having to deal with this fraction, uh, you just have to deal with a single variable. Okay, then let's go ahead and simplify. So this is, uh, this could be written as B take A and then plus 2a, actually let's write that as 2xa minus x on 2b. So I've just expanded those brackets out. Then combine like terms, we could write this as 2xa take a, and then add on b take x on 2b. And then if we factorize uh, an a out of these terms here, we'd get 2x take one a and then factorize a b out here we would get one take x on two b here's what i think is the key idea behind this question so it is the fact that if c x e is a straight line then c e equals k c x in that case the coefficients of a and b must be equal because CE is A plus B. The coefficients are one. In other words, they're equal. So let's just point to this expression, say coefficients are equal. Therefore, the coefficients for CX must be equal as well. Okay, therefore the coefficients of CX are also equal. So for this one, we can say, therefore, 2x take 1 equals 1 take x on 2 and then solve this for x so uh, maybe multiply everything by 2 so we get 4x take 2 equals 2 take x and then bring that x over to the other side we'd get 5x equal to add that 2 to the right hand side 5x equals 4 x equals 4 and 5 then remember we let x equals n over n plus one. So n over n plus one equals four and five. Therefore n must be four. Um, so our final answer there is n equal to four. There is quite a lot of work in that question. Um, so you may be thinking this should be more than four marks. And I'm going to justify why this might be a four mark question. The more marks you give to a question, so let's say this was a five or six mark question, then the higher that percentage of the total paper that question takes up. So if you don't get the answer to that question, the lower your grade is going to be. By making it less marks, they're not necessarily saying it's less difficult. They're essentially saying, you know, we still want you to get a good grade, even if you don't get this question right. Um, so there's a kind of a defense as to why that might be four marks. Um, I think it's not really indicative of the difficulty, but uh, there you go. I think that's a good question, but I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do you think that question was difficult if you gave it a go? Did you get it straight away? Maybe you're sitting there thinking, what are you going on about? I saw this straight away, but let me know in the comments. Maybe you even had a different way of solving that question. Um, I'd be really interested to know. Leave a like if you appreciated this video. Um, subscribe if you want to see more content. And I'll see you in the next one. 
Thanks for watching. Bye for now.